Ain't it odd how most of the mass shooters are racist right wingers while you don't really see left wing shooters doing mass shootings because they hate uh, somebody's race or religion. George, I've used the word uh, chilling to describe what I heard the sheriff run through chronicling everything about this incident. Um, tell me what it was like being there listening to that and what kind of information you gleaned that you didn't know yesterday. Yeah, Alex, and you can just hear it in the sheriff's voice how heavy this weighs on him and the entire agency here having to not only go through this manifesto, which he described as the diary of a madman, but also watching the video. And we actually got to see just a few seconds of what happened inside of the Dollar General yesterday. Mind you, he said he was only going to play the first few seconds for context, but not play out the rest of it out of respect for the families. So some other highlights that we picked up there from the press conference, as you mentioned, three of the victims that were shot were identified. We know the entire incident lasted roughly around 11 minutes. Uh, the sheriff saying that a suicide note appears to have been found on the laptop. Uh, it looks like the shooter left several people out of the store. It's unclear why at this point. The sheriff said, obviously you mentioned that he had an opportunity while he was at that historically black college to possibly do some harm. It looks like potentially that security guard may have had a hand in stopping all of it. But really, the highlight of all of this was that this investigation is clearly still ongoing. A lot of questions were circulating about the, the guns. And I want to read something that he said. He said, here in lies the difficulty. When a person grabs a hold of a gun with hateful intentions, it is very difficult to stop. And so, of course, like I said, they are going through everything. Every well, we can make it harder for these people to access guns. Little detail of this shooting to try and learn more about the background of this shooter, why he may have done this. And again, I questioned him about, you know, having to read that manifesto. And again, he was just, it, it, you can see it again, he could, how much it weighed on him to have to go through every page of this and, and try to decipher what motivation or what other intention may have been behind this beyond just the racial component. And I asked him if he was worried if this was going to cause a divide here in Jacksonville and maybe have some ripple effects nationwide, given that this white individual went into this predominantly black community and killed these three people. And he said he hopes not. He says this is not indicative or representative of the community here in Jacksonville. This is very isolated. And he thinks that this is as tragic as it is will unfortunately bring the community together as they try to heal. These events may be quote unquote isolated in various communities, but nationwide, the rise of racist mass shooters is getting extreme feel from the violence that has now touched this community like so many others as we've reported in the past Alex you know it's extraordinary he will have to go through this through the manifestos uh, plural we say uh, and all the details but something he said that was very poignant and it's true don't try to make sense of the senseless violence here it's a difficult thing to do